since we've covered some basics, in the next few videos, we're going to add some 3D modeling and some C Sharp, which is the subject of this video. Eventually, we're going to make everything here, but in this video, we're going to take a C Sharp script and turn it into a bolt graph. And because we're going to take that slow, we're just going to move the texture on this conveyor belt. Let's start by getting ProBuilder to make the conveyor belt. So go to Window, Package Manager, and then uh, scroll down and find ProBuilder and install it. Then go to Tools and ProBuilder and ProBuilder Window, and then dock the window to the side. Then in the ProBuilder window next to New Shape, click on that plus. That brings up the Shape tool where you can select what shape you want. Uh, so we're using the plane. And each shape can be modified with these parameters. So when you're done shaping your shape, just click Build and then close the shape tool. And let's rename the plane game object to conveyor belt. And just so that it isn't a mystery, I'm going to explain this toolbar here. So uh, this is for selecting and manipulating faces or polygons. The next one is for selecting and moving uh, edges. This is for vertices. And then the last one is for selecting the whole object. So let's move the object to be under where our balls are instantiating. Let's set up the material for the conveyor belt. So go to your material folder and right click, go to create and make a new material and call it conveyor belt material. And then drag that onto the conveyor belt and it won't change because the color is the same as the default color. So now we need the texture that we're going to move across this model. You could use any image that you like for this, but I made a texture for us in a program called Substance Designer. And the link to those textures is below. You can select the material in the project folder, but I'm going to look at it on the model itself. Okay, so we need to drag these textures into the material slot. So get conveyor belt uh, base color and drag that into the albedo and nothing changes. The reason nothing changes is because I made this texture to be white, so you could change the color of the material to be whatever you want. Next, grab the normal map, and you'll probably need to click Fix somewhere there. And then down where it says Emission, toggle that, and then drag in the conveyor arrow up. Click on the white color swatch right next to Albedo, and then bring the color down into the gray so we can see our texture. Now go down to where it says tiling, and you can click and drag that and see what it does. So on the X, it scales the width of the texture, and on the Y, it scales the length. I'll use a value of 0.2 for the X and the Y. And at this scaling, you can really see the effect of our normal map, which is faking the lighting so it looks like the conveyor belt has these little uh, bumps. Okay, I'm going to fold the material up, then go to Add Component and add a flow machine. Create a new macro and call it Conveyor Belt. So let's start by deleting Start and Update. The C Sharp script that we're using for this is actually in the Unity documentation, so I'm going to bring that window here. Okay, let's go ahead and just get this Material Set Texture Offset unit. Right click, Add a Unit, Material Set Texture Offset. And the options that we have as far as nodes matches the documentation. So this first one matches here, and the second one, the parameters match here. And so the property is uh, name, so that's a string, and you can see that there's a string right here. And then the vector 2 here also matches the vector 2 there. So let's grab the first one, the one with the property name, for example, main text. The graph inspector has the same information that we saw in the fuzzy finder. For example, this value vector 2 called texture placement offset is right there. Offsetting the texture moves the texture across the model. And if we expand the material, we can scroll down and see the below the tiling is the texture offset. So find that and play with it a little bit on the X and Y to get a feel for what it does. This is what we're going to be changing in Bolt. Now, don't worry if you've never used C Sharp before, because if you've been following these tutorials, you actually know quite a lot. 
In fact, what I want to do here is focus you on the things that you know rather than the things you don't, like class here. So where example is the name of this class and the name of the script, conveyor belt is the name of our macro. The next part is for declaring variables of stuff that we want to use. And in Bolt, we do that here. The first variable we have is of type float, and the variable is called scroll speed. And the value is 0.5f for float. So let's create that and let's make it an object variable because I would like to see the speed of the texture on the game object itself when the game is running in case we want to change the speed. Scroll speed is a pretty good name for this variable, but I'd like to make it more obvious that it's for the texture scrolling and not the speed that the conveyor belt is pushing the ball. So I'm going to call this variable texture scroll speed. Now, when I press enter here, it automatically makes this variable of type float because I had a float variable here and I think it remembers that. So you might need to click on type and select float and then the value is going to be 0.5, just like it is in the example. Okay, and then the next thing we want is a renderer. And we talked about that in the last video, in the random colors video. Let's make this a graph variable because we don't really need to access it on the game object outside of the graph. And abstract variable names like rend are really confusing, especially for beginners. So I want to give it a better name. I'll call it conveyor belt renderer. And then press enter or the plus. We can leave this type to be null for now because we're going to, uh, on start, get the component renderer from the game object and then set our rend, uh, our renderer variable as that. So let's get a start event. So I'm going to move that down for now and right click, add a unit, and type start. All right, we got that. And then next up, we have the rend variable that we're setting. So hold Alt and left click drag your variable into the graph. Now that's a set variable unit. And let's move it to the right. And then next up, we have a get component of type renderer. So right click and type, actually type game object get component. Because we want to get the component from this game object. And that's something that's implied in the C-sharp. OK, and we have a few different unit options here. So this node, uh, there's an S, so it gets multiple components and puts them in an array. And the next one, you actually type in a string of what component you want to get. Uh, we don't want that. We want this one right here, where you specify the type of the component, just like you would do in declaring a variable. And then the type that we want is type renderer. So just type renderer. And that's it. OK, so let's connect this up. You've probably noticed by now that in Bolt, the order is flipped or reversed from the order that it is in C Sharp. And again, even though this is null now, once uh, the variable is set with the renderer, the type is going to change to renderer. And with that, this section is done. So I'm just going to mark that like I did with the variables. So that corresponds to that. And next, we have an update event. So right click, add unit, update. And then we see float. So this is another variable. Uh, offset equals time dot time times scroll speed. OK, so I'm not sure if we need this float. Let's move on to time dot time. Let's right click and try and find that. Time, and I'm going to press space and time. And then we see time get time at the top. That's what we want. So I'll click that. And then let's look in the graph inspector. The time at the beginning of this frame, this is the time in seconds since the start of the game. And we can use this time value to offset our texture. So go to the variables tab and get the object variable for texture scroll speed, and then bring that in because we're going to multiply time dot time with this speed. So add a unit and type multiply and get multiply and math scalar and then connect those up. And by the way, you can also select nodes and hover over them to get information that's in the graph inspector. Now we messed around a little bit with the offset on the material and 
Uh, I wanted to show you that we don't want to move it positively because that moves the arrows backwards. We actually want to move it negatively on the Y. So to move the texture offset negatively, we're going to need to multiply this value by a negative number, uh, negative one. So get a multiply unit in math scalar again, and just put negative one, and then connect that up. And I'm going to squish all this together so I don't have to resize my windows. Next up, we have our uh, renderer variable, rend. Uh, and that's the component that we got and saved as rend. Renderer.material, we looked at this in the last video in the random colors. That is renderer get material. So type renderer get material. Since we're following the C-sharp script, they get the renderer from the variable that was saved. So let's do that too. Let's bring in the variable and connect that up to the renderer. Then plug the material we're getting into the material set texture offset, just like the script. So our render variable, we're getting a material from it and then putting it into the set texture offset. And then what property are we uh, setting the offset on? The property is main text. That's the property name for the main texture of our material. Shaders are the scripts working behind the scenes of our materials. And if you want to see all of the different properties to use in your programming, just click on the three dot menu, also called a kebab menu, and click on select shader. There you'll see all the different properties, including uh, main text, which is the one that we're using. Next, it says new vector two. And if you've tried, you notice that the float isn't going to plug into this vector two input. The vector2 allows us to offset the texture left or right or up and down. So uh, type create vector2 and then we want the one with x and y because we want to plug in this value into the y and then we want x to be zero. So that one right there. And then plug in the value from the negative one multiply to move it negatively on the y and then we can leave x as zero. So let's connect that up and then connect that there, and then uh, plug the vector two into the set material offset. Because Bolt can plug right into this uh, create vector two, we actually don't need a variable like they're using here, the offset that they have on the X. Uh, we don't need that because we can just plug it right in. And just to complete my color marking, we have completed this section here, and that corresponds to this section here. Okay, let's press play and see if this works. And it does. Cool. Of course, we don't have the uh, physics of the conveyor belt yet, but in the next few videos, we're not going to do C-sharp. We're just going to do Bolt, and we'll go through the graphs a lot quicker.